slipping on the J. Four times on the floor like hey. It came out fly when we're slipping on the J. Four times like snake. It came out fly when we're slapping on the J. Four times on the floor like hey. It came out fly when we're slipping on the J. Four times like snake. It came out fly when we're slapping on the J. Four times on the floor like hey. It came out fly when we're slipping on the J. Four times like snake. It came out fly when we're slapping on the slapping on the. Four times on the floor like hey. It came out fly when we're slipping on the J. Any interruptions during this video because take a look at this room. Wow, talk about a grand suite. Normally I start in the bathroom because the bathroom is the first thing I see and today is no exception because I have a guest bathroom today. So immediately I'm struck by the green marbling, the green wallpaper with the floral background impregnated in it. I like having a guest bathroom. It's wonderful for entertaining and plus it keeps the guests out of your personal and private bathroom. Okay, taking a step back from the guest bathroom and just appreciating this foyer for a while. This is a grand foyer. Very wide hallways, tall ceilings, crown molding, there's artwork and there are mirrors scattered throughout this entire place. It's very classically decorated and it segues and leads into this wonderful entertainment room. The entertainment room is quite dynamic. There's a lot going on. There's a formal sitting area, a formal dining area with a chandelier. The ceilings get even taller from the grand foyer. The crown molding continues. Here is the bar area, probably the coolest part of the room. This room is an entertainer's dream. Again, with the guest bathroom and then this grand entertainment room. If you want to watch a Super Bowl party or get together on a very popular weekend in Vegas, this would be the room for you. The green marbling is so cool. This is so exquisite. Really punctuates the room nicely. Large double door leading into the master bedroom. Let's take a look at this dining area. Circular table, more art on the wall. Again, another mirror. Again, very classically decorated. We have your mini bar over here and a little work desk right here in the corner in case you have to pound out an email or two. TV on the wall right there, TV on the wall over the bar. No matter where you are in this room, you need to be able to catch a glimpse of what's ever on that television. 13 people could sit in this room and countless more could stand. Wow. Let's check out the master bedroom. Inside the master bedroom and this is a continuation of what started in the formal entertainment room. The high ceilings continue, the crown molding is here, the decorative inlays, more art on the wall. Look at these gargantuan pieces of glass on each side of the bed and then seating everywhere. Traditional chair, there's a high back chair with an ottoman and then you have some more seating right here on the bench. You can use this to get ready in the morning or also to keep your essentials nearby. Let's check out this bed. <sighs> I'm undecided. It's a little springy, a little firm, but anytime I say I don't like those beds, I always end up loving them, so I'll get back to you on that. The double doors here are nice for privacy, a touch of class, of course. I love the double doors. Finally, the room is punctuated by this large window, near floor to ceiling, very long, very wide. It offers a huge purview into the hustle and bustle of Vegas life.
All right, ladies, pay attention. This one is specifically for you. We have a dedicated makeup room. We have a beautiful glass table, nice makeup chair, a large, large mirror in front of you, nicely lit. There's also a makeup mirror right there. And to add efficiency and convenience, the closets are right behind. Double sliding doors provide access to the bathroom. There is so much going on in this room. I know I said that the bar is probably my favorite spot in this room, but the best spot is easily this bathroom. Butterfly dual vanities, which provide the most space possible, and it is anchored by this double shower. Look at this thing. It's not quite as good as my shower in Tokyo at the Prince Gallery Tokyo Kyoto, but this is easily the second best shower on the channel. Look at this. There's one for you and one for another. Awesome. Deep, huge whirlpool tub. A lot of access around here for your laptop or your products. Towels can be easily placed right there. A robe hanging right here for convenience for this vanity. There's a robe over here for this vanity. This is really set up for his and hers, or him and him, or her and her, whatever it is, but it's set up for two people. The octagonal mirrors are an interesting but great choice for this room. And again, you have a huge mirror on the backdrop here. It keeps the bathroom really nice, white, and bright. I'm noticing aromatherapy products. I'll put those for good use. And also, there isn't just Shampoo, conditioner, and body lotion. They give you some toothpaste and some mouthwash and a toothbrush as well. I like that. Just a few added points of convenience to make you stay that much more comfortable. Last but not least, at the very end of this master bath, and really at the very end of this hotel room, is your private toilet. There's a huge wide door here that shuts. Make sure you have your utmost privacy, and there's a phone there for convenience or in case you get inspired. All right, that is it for an initial room rundown. There's a lot of room here. There's so much to talk about. I need to delve into this thing. I need to spend a couple days here before I tell you what I really think of it, but initial impressions, wow. All right, I had a late lunch. I originally intended to go to the British pub, but it was closed. So I just saw it, and I walked past a place called Chica, which was a Peruvian place, and I went in and it looked great. So I sat down and I ordered a couple different things. I ordered the classic Peruvian ceviche, and then I ordered the avocado with pork belly in it. I had no idea you could add pork belly to a guacamole, but uh, you can, it, they did, and uh, it was awesome. That was actually my favorite dish. It came with a side of chips, plantains, and then arepas, which is essentially cornmeal. And the cool thing about these arepas, which was my absolute favorite thing out of everything I tasted and drank, was that they had different flavors. So there was a cheddar one, there was a butter one, there was a lime one, and there was a beet one. And that's why you see the different colors in them. Those were awesome. If you're looking to get filled quickly, they did that. Like those four cornmeal nuggets, those morsels, and the guacamole got me full really fast. Um, I did have the guava pina colada, 
Um, it's exactly what you think it would be, guava and pina colada. I was hoping that it would have more of a pina colada influence in it. Uh, it did, but it was really subtle, and it was definitely guava forward. So if you like guava with a little bit of coconut cream in it, that's a drink for you. So tonight I'm planning on going to Emerald Steakhouse Delmonico. I was back and forth between Delmonico and Wolfgang Puck Cut. I did go to Wolfgang Cut. <laughs> it's hard to say. I did go to Wolfgang Puck Cut about six months ago, so I want to try something new in a place I've never been before. So that's where I'm going to go to Emeralds. There's a couple things on the menu that I've looked over already. I'm really excited about it, but who knows what I'm going to order once I get there. All right, day number two at the Venetian. Let's take a look outside and see what's going on. Another perfect day in Vegas. I love coming to Vegas in the fall. It's the perfect weather. Okay, let's talk about dinner last night. Delmonico, Emeralds Delmonico. I did something there that I almost never do, and it's really sacrilegious, and I totally admit it. I went to a steakhouse, one of the best steakhouses in Vegas, Emeralds Steakhouse, and I didn't order a steak. I know, I actually feel really guilty about it. So here's what happened. I fully intended to get a steak. I just ordered an appetizer and I ordered the wrong appetizer. I ordered the Kiribata. I think that's what it called, don't quote me on that. And it was a special type of thick cut bacon. Whenever I see it on the menu, I almost automatically and robotically order it. I just have to have it. Very rarely do you see it and then very rarely do you see it at ultra high end places. So I ordered it and it was huge. I mean, for $22, it was like a steak within itself. In fact, if you wanna get filled at one of the best restaurants in Vegas for a cheap price, go in and order that. So I ate that and I was like, why? Well, I can't eat another steak. So I ordered the barbecued shrimp and then also ordered the steak tartare. Uh, I'd say the stand up by far was the thick cut bacon. You have to go check it out. If you like bacon, thick cut bacon or meats in general, Go there and check it out, again, because it's such a unique piece of meat, a Japanese black pig. So cool. Um, the shrimp was supposed to be one of their house dishes. It's like one of their signature dishes. I personally just didn't care for it. It was like a little Creole and a little spice mixed with barbecue. And I know that's the type of flair Emeril uses on his dishes, but it just wasn't for me. And the steak tartare was just average. I did like how they had the egg yolk and the egg white separated and crumbled. That was really neat but it wasn't a mind blower or game changer. It was just above average. So that was my dinner at Emeralds. Today, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to check out the gym. I want to take some shots around this hotel, but I don't really have any formal plans or itinerary, which makes it a great day. I guess we'll just see.
liquid breakfast this morning. Not the kind of liquid breakfast I'd be preferring to have in Vegas, if you know what I mean, but it's a liquid breakfast nonetheless. Before I tell you about that, I want to tell you about dinner last night. You know, what a great place this is where you can go to Wolfgang Puck and then Emerald in consecutive nights and see which one you like best. That's what I did, and I would say I like Cut by Wolfgang Puck better. The menu was larger, it had more variety. Um, the cocktail menu was much more vast and superior, and the atmosphere was way cooler than what I saw at Emeralds at Delmonico. Uh, I went to the Dorsey afterwards, which is a really cool cocktail lounge. It is modeled like after a library, but it's dark, and it is well decorated, and it's cool, and it's modern, it's sophisticated, it's trendy, it's low-key. It was really cool. I had two phenomenal drinks. The whole menu was very creative. They're switching the menu up again in a couple weeks. They're going to put their classic hits on there, the best drinks for the last four years, that's a reason to come back in itself. Last night at the Venetian, my last night in Vegas. Vegas for 12 nights, wow. Has anybody stayed on the strip for 12 nights and it's not been for business? Let me know, I wanna hear about it. So yeah, um, let me tell you about a few of the shortcomings of this room. There's, there are only a few, just a few little qualms I have. My overall view of this room is very positive, overwhelmingly positive, but there are just a few little concerns I have. Uh, the first one being each one of these lights needs to be turned on or off individually. Now look at the size of this room and look how many lights there are. It takes minutes, literally minutes, to either turn on or off all the lights by hand. It's really annoying. Uh, the Wynn and the Aria and the Cosmo, they all have centralized and systemized lights, all on, all off, and that would be really great in a room of this caliber. Also, uh, tech people, device people, you should be concerned because the outlets are in very precarious spots. Here is my dinner, by the way. Look at this, dinner of champions. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so let's say you're having dinner right here and you wanna edit a video or do some work on a laptop. There aren't any plugs at the bar. They're on the wall, but they don't reach the seats over here, so that is disconcerting. Same thing for the table. If you want to maybe have more space for your table, lay out a project to get some work done, Look where the outlets are. They are on the wall right here. So you see what I had to do. I had to pull a chair by the wall and then plug it in, which was really inconvenient. Same thing with the couch and chairs over here. There are no outlets. So if you wanna charge your phone and sit on the couch and watch a TV, that's not happening. And then lastly, same thing for the desk. There are some outlets over here, but they are occupied. All right, so if you really need connectivity, or if you have a lot of device management, you should be a little concerned that you're not gonna be able to be very comfortable in this room. Also, the furniture is a little uncomfortable. I took a nap on that couch. I woke up with like somewhat of a swollen face. Uh, I had a pillow and still the comfortable pillow did not shield me from that rough, concrete-esque couch. Now the couch does pull out into a bed. I don't know how the bed is, but if it's any way the couch was, you should be a little scared. Uh, lastly, this room is a little drab, it's a little dreary, a little dungeony. There isn't any overhead lighting, all the lighting is freestanding and based, so the room is just a little dark. In fact, I've made a point to film my videos during the day with the blinds open just to have ample light. I like my rooms to be light and bright and white, at least I like the opportunity to have them that way. So yeah, a little dark in there. This room really caters to and I think appeals to someone who likes a traditional hotel stay. Uh, someone who wants to sit down and order room service, maybe have some services ordered to their room, sit down, watch a movie. Someone who likes a formal bedroom, a formal bathroom, a formal dining area, and a formal entertainment room. If you're more of a modern hotel person, this room might be a little overkill for you. Who this would appeal to, I think, also would be groups whether it's a bunch of guys or a bunch of girls or maybe even two couples, um, there's ample space, right? I mean, there's a ton of space here to sleep potentially, put your bags and luggage and clothes. And remember, there's a guest bathroom, so one person could get ready in here, and then there's the dedicated makeup room and then the huge master bathroom with two vanities. So theoretically, four people could have their own individual space and get ready simultaneously. 
I just finished up the bath in there. I spent a lot of time here. I took a bath every night. That was so relaxing. And then the shower. If it wasn't for the shower experience in Tokyo, at the Prince Gallery, Tokyo Kyocho, this would probably be my favorite shower. Look how cool it is in here. I'm probably gonna do another video on Aria versus Bellagio versus Wynn versus the Venetian. But uh, I'm enchanted again by the north end of the strip. Uh, Aria and Cosmo and that area really captured my mind and heart for a long time. But after spending considerable time back down here, this I think is again my favorite spot. This property specifically offers everything. I believe it to be the largest resort in Vegas. I mean, it has an Emerald Lagasse, it has a Wolfgang Puck, the Cake Boss guy is here. Uh, you know, it has huge casino floors, shows, it has everything you want, and plus it gives off that Italian theme. You know, it's inspired by Venice and a lot of different Italian architecture and, and thematics. It is just a sight to be seen. So how am I going to rate the Palazzo? It's right there with the win. Um, it's, it's right there. I think it just loses a few points because of its connectivity. If it had more centralized electronics and more outlet access, it, it, it would be right there easily. I don't mind the classical style. It's not as modern as the win or as Aria or as Cosmo, but it's classy. It's traditional. It's classic. It's timeless. And every time you walk in here, um, it inspires luxury. And that is something that is really appealing to me. I'm gonna rate it elite. It's almost coolest. It's almost coolest. I'm gonna rate it elite. The restaurants on site, the thematics, the architecture, the design, the energy, this place is exceptional. You can't go wrong. I totally encourage you to book here. It is easily one of my top hotels in Vegas, if not my top hotel. If the room just had a bit more modern advancement, I'd probably put it right ahead of the wind. With that being said, there's so much to do here. You can't go wrong. Book with extreme confidence. One of my favorite places, just not in Vegas, but in the world. I'm out. It's been a fantastic time. I can't wait to come back and I'll see you in the next video.